as you can see, our bookshelf is finally done. Um, if you remember, and you follow us on Instagram and Facebook, uh, my husband has been building me a bookshelf in my sitting room, which used to be our living room, for a few weeks now. Um, my child is eating chips in the background. So it's finally just about finished. There's still just a couple of cosmetic things that need to be done. Basically, our thought behind the bookshelf was that we could build it for a lot less than we could buy one for a bookshelf this sturdy. It's solid wood. Um, if you notice, I, we actually didn't put a back on it. We used the wall as the back, so that saved us a ton of time and money. And it's not, we don't have that fear of it falling over because it's so much more heavier worth the back. Uh, and it's also removable from the wall should we ever sell our, our property and someone not want the bookshelf there. So to give you a quick rundown of what happened, we, uh, we have bought, we have a fixer upper that we bought uh, several years ago, about eight years ago now. And, um, you know, it's only about 900 or so square feet and we, um, we needed the extra space so we went ahead and we finished the basement. So our family room is actually down there now because it has a huge family room. And so now our old living room, which is a lot smaller, we've now turned into my sitting room, um, which is also our library. So I really, um, I'm really enjoying it and it's a really nice setting, really great environment, very quiet and I hope to take you around it um, at one day in the future. But today, that's not what this is about. Today, since in honor of the bookshelf, um, I wanted to go over, go over some of my favorite books. Um, most of them are resource books, books that I use on a regular basis to learn from. And then others are just like some cookbooks and stuff that I enjoy. So I wanted to go ahead and start with those. I'll also link it in a blog post so that you can actually see it um, and go back. That way you don't have to write notes out. Um, there's a lot of them, so I'll try to make it quick. The first one is uh, Folk Medicine. It's a New England almanac of natural health care from a noted Vermont country doctor. I, I, um, I actually reviewed this book on my blog last year. It was either last year or the year before last. Um, a lot of people have bought this book since then. It's, it's really interesting. I wouldn't swear by it, but um, you know, honestly, there's a lot of great information in here. Mainly what it's about, um, it's mostly about using apple cider vinegar and how to use it properly and the outcome of using it. Um, one of the stories in here that stuck out to me specifically was uh, infertility. Um, when your body isn't alkalined properly, uh, ACV helps you do that. So this was interesting. Um, there was a story of one girl who was infertile and became fertile after three months of drinking ACV. I should probably do that because we've been having fertility issues for years after our first son was born, or our child was born. Um, and I've had a miscarriage, possibly two since then. And so that's something that I'm actually taking back out and rereading. So this is great. It's by DC uh, Jarvis, MD. Um, again, I will link all of these so you can find them easily. I should put a disclaimer on here. Uh, a lot of these books are not necessarily books that I've bought brand new. Most of the books that I buy are secondhand, either from our favorite bookstore or they have come from the Amazon used book area online. And my next one that uh, really comes in handy for me, and they do have different regional options for this, is the Peterson Field Guide Medicinal Plants and Herbs book. This book um, is strictly for Eastern and Central United States, so that's me. The most thing, the thing I love most about this book is that it gives me pictures to look through, and then it also gives me um, warnings. So if this plant isn't good for certain animals, or if you're only supposed to use it in a certain way, like say you're supposed to use it steeped in a tea rather than eating it actually raw, then this is actually a really great book. It gives you the scientific de scientific definition for it. Uh, it tells you the, the family that it's in, when it grows, what it looks like. It's it's a really great book to have. You can find these for your area of the United States. I don't know. I assume they have it for different regions of the world, but I don't really know. But they do have it for my region. This book I actually found at a bookstore. The other two books I bought um, used on Amazon. This book is Medicinal Plants of North America. Um, this is the same concept. 
It's, uh, but honestly, this one's, I like this one a little bit more. I wish they went more in depth with it, but they don't. Uh, but this one, it, it gives you the same thing, gives you the scientific definition for it, gives you what it's good for, but it even takes it a step further. It actually, it shows you what it's used for as food. It shows you where it's located, the description of the plant shows you the traditional uses for it. So like what the Native Americans used it for, which is something that really interests me. And then it shows you what the modern uses are for it. Um, so like what medicines it is in that people have you know, found. And, and then it can also give you the wildlife and veterinary uses for it. So this is a really great book. Again, this is just for, for North America. It is by um, a falcon guide because it's one of those field guide series. Every single person, every single person in the United States needs to own this book. This is Herbal Antibiotics. It's um, a story medicinal herb guide. This is so informative. It's about natural alternatives for treating drug resistant bacteria. I first learned about this book in Mother Earth News. Um, they did a brief um, excerpt on it. It just has a little dog inside, so you might hear heavy breathing in the background. <laughs> okay, so um, this, really great. I saw it in Mother Earth News. So they had the excerpt in there, and it was, the thing that stood out to me most was, was when um, they mentioned how all of these superbugs that we have in the United States now, it, they could be, they're here because we created them. Because we have antibiotics in everything that we eat and everything that we do. And so this this is a great book. Um, the Era of Penicillin Miracle is over, and that is one of the things they talk about in here, and so I encourage you to get that. If nothing else, get this and read, read it cover to cover. Uh, this is a new book. Uh, I actually I saw this from somebody on YouTube, and I cannot for the life of me remember who it was who posted it. Um, it was something recent, too. I'd seen it before then, but somebody else posted it recently. This is the Herbal Medicine Maker's Handbook. Handbook. It's a home uh, It's a home manual, and what it does is it kind of gives you the rundown on these things. It gives you um, recipes and what to use it for, um, how to use these things, certain, you know, it's, it's a really great book. I'm going to be honest. I have not read through all of it yet. Um, it is it is my book that I'm reading through right now. So this is what I'm reading right now. Um, another book that if you're into herbal remedies, this is probably one that you're going to want to get. Um, that's it for my herbal collection. I have a lot more books. Oh, actually, it's not it. Hold on. The Complete Book of Herbs. I, I also found this um, at the bookstore. That's where I found this. This is an older book. Okay, so I'm sure they probably have a newer version out, but I got this because it was like a dollar. And um, this goes through and it gives you these beautiful photographs and uh, all of the information that you need about herbs. And it's a really great handbook to have. Um, shows you what it needs to grow, shows you how to use it, uh, whether it's edible or not edible. Gives you garden layout. It, it's a beautiful book. Um, really suggest this too. So some of those books, the field guide books I also use uh, for my homestead. I actually use them for my animals as well. Um, most of the time, most of the time they have whether you should or shouldn't give it to animals. Now rabbits and chickens obviously digest things different and ducks and some small, small livestock digest things differently. So if it says don't give it to a horse, I'm definitely not giving it to my smaller livestock. So the next thing you know, I don't have a ton of books that I use um, for my animals, but there are two main ones that I highly suggest to everyone. Uh, the first one is Beyond the Pellet. This is by um, Boyd Craven Jr. and Rick Warden. This is about feeding rabbits naturally. If you are getting into meat rabbits specifically, this book is necessary for you. Um, this is really big on raw food diet and how to do it, how to do it efficiently, how to grow your own, how to get it from the grocery store if you can't find it or grow it yourself. Um, really, really great information about feeding your rabbits naturally. Uh, so I, it, really, you need to get this. It's nothing fancy about it. It's black and white photos. It's you know, It was put together by the founders of the Backyard Meat Rabbit, Rabbit Facebook group. And so if you haven't joined that yet and you are part of 
this community and wanting to get into rabbits, then you really do need to join that Facebook community. When I first got into rabbits, I learned everything from, from Boyd, Boyd Craven and Rick Warden. Um, Rise and Shine Rabbitry, his website is incredible, and I really suggest that you go to his website and check that out too. In fact, he has an herbal list of herbal remedies that you can give to your rabbit for, I think, every ailment that they could ever have. And print that thing off and stick it in your homestead folder and keep it because you're going to reference back to it all the time. It's not a book, it's a web page, but print it off if you can. In the meantime, buy Beyond the Pellet and read it cover to cover. I read it in one night. It's really thin. So I have a lot of favorite cookbooks. Um, I cannot tell you, I don't have enough time to tell you all of my favorite cookbooks. I'm going to run through four of them really quickly. The first one has to be the first one is The Farmer's Daughter. This book by Don Stoltzfus, uh, I actually used to work for her. She was my very first real job at a Mennonite store here in Virginia called The Farmer's Daughter. Or The Farmer's Wife, sorry. The book's called The Farmer's Daughter. Um, it, it doesn't, isn't it? not in existence anymore, but uh, I started working there when I was in high school, and I think that everything I learned in the kitchen was turned on and the, wind, the, the Mennonite women that worked there. Um, I made lifelong friends there, and I would say that God really placed me in that place for those friendships that I made. And the things that I learned, not just cooking, but morals. This is a great book, and these are straight from her kitchen. Again, nothing fancy, but she, she has little stories and um, little tricks that you can do. This is a really great cookbook. Please buy it. She's such a sweet woman. I love her to death. The next one is another local author. This is uh, Growing Tomorrow by Forrest Pritchard. And the photographs are actually by Molly Peterson. And she is a local photographer here as well. And someone who I admire greatly. She actually lives right up the road from me. Um, her and her husband own Heritage Hollow Farms. If you're looking for true farmers and people who are doing this thing right and who have experience and who are going to laugh their heads off at you if you're like, oh, I know everything. No. These guys are great. They're, check them out online. Uh, Forrest Pritchard is, <clears throat> he's also the uh, farmer at Smith Meadows. Um, he's been in this a lifetime. He wrote, I'll show you. Forrest wrote the book Gaining Ground. Uh, this is a New York Times bestseller. If New York Times bestseller. This guy lives not far away from me either. Forward by Joel Salatin. Joel Salatin lives not far away from us out in the valley. Um, so we're all kind of in the Shenandoah Valley community, and it's great to know these people. This is a good book, too, if you're looking for it. This is the story of Forrest's life and how he got into farming. He was not planning on being a farmer, and that's the best part about it. His book, his cookbook with Molly, uh, they traveled all across the United States, so the pictures are beautiful. The, um, the stories about these farmers is what really gets me. I love reading these stories about these farmers and the farms that they visited. Um, it, it is really great, but beautiful photos, beautiful recipes, simple, easy farm-to-table food. This is a great book. My next cookbook which you probably all have, but it's The Nourish Kitchen. And if you're looking for fermented foods, real food, like not just Pinterest food and not just I'm just getting started fermenting food, this, this is a great, great book. Jennifer is wonderful. She's a very sweet woman and she knows her stuff. She knows the science behind real nourishing food. Um, you can see I've gone through for years and, and looked at this. And she also has great photos, great information, all of this information that goes with these recipes in here. It gives you some of the history on it. Um, this one is for milk kefir. And then she has a, uh, I think it's a Scandinavian yogurt uh, or Icelandic, one or the other. So great, great stuff in here. Um, if you're looking to eat healthier, this is where to start. Last cookbook. Because I know you're getting tired of it. <laughs> this is a fun cookbook. This isn't local. This isn't nourishing. This is just, this is a really fun cookbook. And I haven't had time to read through the whole thing. I actually, I started reading this cookbook. Uh, my grandma had it. Somebody bought it for her. And so I ended up buying a copy of my own. This is called Smokehouse Ham, Spoonbread, and Scuppernong Wine. 
It's the Folklore and Art of Southern Appalachian Cooking. Okay, this is by Joseph Dabney. And this is the 10 year anniversary. So this is a celebration of food lore handed down from Scotland, England, Ireland, Germany, and the Cherokee Nation. My history, my genealogy stems from Indian, American Indian, and Irish. Um, my father's side of the family clearly is Irish with a name like McCleary. Um, and then my mom and my grandma's side of the family, um, they stem supposedly from American Indian heritage here. And if you look at my grandma, she has jet black hair, so it doesn't surprise me that that's here. A lot of people in our Foothill, Blue Ridge Mountain area, they come from American Indians. Um, and often when I was a kid, my one of my great uncles, he would say, wow, you, you know, certain ways, I would always wear my hair down in a side braid, which apparently is very popular now, but I've done it before it was cool. Um, I always would wear, have, have my hair long, and I even now into adulthood I'll wear it long, when it gets long, in a side braid. And he would often say, wow, you, you look a lot like your heritage today. And so, of course, my hair used to be a little bit darker than it is now, and I used to be a little bit darker. I'm, I'm ash and white now, but this is a great book. It is, it is really a history book. Um, it, it has a lot of great recipes in it, but it has a lot of great Appalachian history in it. Now, I don't live in Appalachia. But um, I'm very close to it, and I have friends who live there. And this book, I I love this book. I this is like sitting down and just reading a story. And I love history, and I love learning about my heritage, especially when it comes to food. So really, highly suggest it. This I think I did buy this one brand new. I'm not quite sure, but it wasn't that much. This set, no, I didn't buy it brand new. This says it's twenty nine ninety nine. I know I bought it. I bought. I think I bought it used. I think it was still like. $18, but it's in great condition. So there are other books in this series. Highly suggest you get this one though. It's great. I am not even showing you my whole bookshelf because it's bigger than what my camera can show you. I do, however, um, hope that you'll enjoy the books that I've, I've offered uh, and reviewed to you. Some of them have been reviewed online, so you can search my blog. I am making a blog post, and so I will post that later this week. You'll have to keep checking below because it's probably there already with the link, uh, with listing all of these. So enjoy it, uh, share it if you want to, and happy eating if you get the cookbooks. Happy homesteading, and I hope you guys have a great week. You're probably not going to hear from me again this week because I'm swamped with work. Um, and quite honestly, real work comes before making videos. So real work, I understand videos are real work, that's what I'm saying. But what I'm saying is the job that pays the bills comes before making videos and blogging. So once that dies down, you'll see me a little bit more often. Until then, have a great weekend.